द फंडामेंटल थ्योरम ऑफ केलॉइज थ्योरी सो द स्टेटमेंट इज लेट के बी अ नॉर्मल एक्सटेंशन ऑफ अ फील्ड एफ ऑफ कैरेक्टरटिक्स जीरो शो दैट देर इज वन टू वन करस्पॉन्डेंस बिटवीन द सेट ऑफ सब फील्ड ऑफ के विच कंटेन एफ एंड द सेट ऑफ सब ग्रुप्स ऑफ जी के कॉमा एफ फर्दर एफ टी इज एनी सब फील्ड ऑफ के विच कंटेन्स एफ देन द थ्री कंडीशन इज द डिग्री ऑफ के ओवर टी इज इक्वल टू ऑर्डर ऑफ जी के कॉमा टी एंड डिग्री ऑफ टी ओवर एफ इज इक्वल टू इंडेक्स ऑफ जी के कॉमा टी इन जी के कॉमा एफ नाउ द सेकेंड कंडीशन इज इफ टी इज नॉर्मल एक्सटेंशन ऑफ एफ इफ एंड ओनली एफ जी के कॉमा टी इज अ नॉर्मल सब ग्रुप ऑफ जी के कॉमा एफ एंड द थर्ड वन इज इफ टी इज नॉर्मल एक्सटेंशन ऑफ एफ देन जी टी कॉमा एफ इज आइजोमोरफिक टू जी के कॉमा एफ बाय जी के कॉमा टी इसका प्रूफ देखते हैं फॉर एनी सफील टी ऑफ के विच कंटेन एफ लेट जी के कॉमा टी बी अ ग्रुप ऑफ ऑल दोज ऑटोमोरफिज ऑफ के विच लीव एवरी एलिमेंट ऑफ टी फिक्सड वी हैव सिग्मा बिलोंग्स टू जी के कॉमा टी विच एम्प्लाइज दैट सिग्मा लीव्स एवरी एलिमेंट ऑफ टी फिक्सड विच एम्प्लाइज दैट सिग्मा लीव्स एवरी एलिमेंट ऑफ एफ फिक्सड सिंस एफ इज अ सुपर सेट ऑफ टी विच एम्प्लाइज दैट सिग्मा बिलोंग्स टू जी के कॉमा एफ दस जी के कॉमा टी इज अ सुपर सेट ऑफ जी के कॉमा एफ सिंस बोथ जी के कॉमा एफ एंड जी के कॉमा टी आर सब ग्रुप ऑफ जी ऑफ द ग्रुप ऑफ ऑल ऑटोमोरफिज ऑफ के दे फोर जी के कॉमा टी इज अ सुपर सेट ऑफ जी के कॉमा एफ विच एम्प्लाइज दैट जी के कॉमा टी इज अ सब ग्रुप ऑफ जी के कॉमा एफ दस फॉर एनी सफील टी ऑफ के विच कंटेन एफ वी हैव फाउंड a subgroup g k comma t of g k comma f let us now define a mapping psi from the set of subfield of k which contain f into the set of subgroups g k comma f by the formula psi t is equal to g k comma t for every subfield t of k which contains f psi is on to for any subgroup h of g k comma f let k h denote the fixed uh, field of h let k h is equal to x belongs to k such that sigma x is equal to x for all x uh, sorry for all sigma belongs to h then k h is a subfield of k also sigma belongs to h which implies that sigma belongs to g k comma f which implies that sigma alpha is equal to alpha for all alpha belongs to f uh, since h is a superset of g k comma f thus if sigma is any element of h then sigma alpha is equal to alpha for all alpha belongs to f therefore f is a superset of kh and so kh is a field of k containing f we have psi kh is equal to g k comma kh is equal to h Uh, therefore psi is on to now psi is one one since k is a normal extension of a field f of characteristic zero therefore k is a splitting field of some uh, polynomial f x belongs to capital f x if t is any sub field of k which contains f then k is also the splitting field of f x regarded as a polynomial over t therefore by theorem k is normal extension of t therefore by the definition of normal extension the fixed field of g k comma t is t thus k g k comma t is equal to t now let t1 and t2 be any two sub field of k which contain f then psi T one is equal to psi t two, which implies that g k comma t one is equal to g k comma t two by definition of psi. So, which implies that the fixed field of g k comma t one is equal to the fixed field of g k comma t two, which implies that k g k comma t one is equal to k g k comma t two, which implies that t one is equal to t two. Therefore, k g k comma t is equal to t, which implies that psi is one one. The psi gives us the desired one to one correspondence. Now, we shall prove the last three point of the theorem. so first theorem, first condition if t is any subfield of k containing f then as proved above k is normal extension of t therefore by corollary we have order of g k comma t is equal to the degree of k over t since k is normal extension of f therefore order of g k comma f is equal to the degree of k over f uh, which is equal to the degree of k over t and the degree of t over f 
which is equal to order of g k comma t the degree of t over f uh, therefore t sorry the degree of t over f is equal to order of g k comma f is uh, uh, sorry k comma f by uh, order of g k comma t is equal to index of g k comma t in g k comma f now the second condition is let t be a subfield of k containing f then t is a normal extension of f if and only if t sigma t is a superset of t for all sigma belongs to g k comma t if and only if sigma t belongs to t for all small t belongs to capital t and for all sigma belongs to g k comma f if and only if to uh, sigma t is equal to sigma t for all small t belongs to t and sigma belongs to g k comma f and for all to belongs to g k comma t note that to belongs to g k comma t this implies that to t is equal to t and for all t belongs to capital t if is that if and only if sigma inverse to sigma t is equal to sigma inverse sigma t for all t belongs to capital t for all sigma belongs to g k comma f and for all to belongs to g k comma t is that if and only if sigma inverse to sigma t is equal to t for all t belongs to t for all sigma belongs to g k comma f and for all to belongs to g k comma t is that if and only if sigma inverse to sigma belongs to g k comma t for all sigma belongs to g k comma f and for all to belongs to g k comma t note that sigma inverse to sigma belongs to g k comma t which implies that sigma inverse to sigma t is equal to t for all t belongs to capital t if and only if g k comma t is a normal subgroup of g uh, g k comma f the third condition is t is normal extension of f then for any any sigma belongs to g k comma f we have sigma t is a superset of t which implies that sigma t belongs to t for all small t belongs to t therefore uh, sigma in induce as an automorphism sigma star of t defined as sigma star t is equal to sigma t for all t belongs to capital t since sigma leaves every element of fx therefore sigma star also leaves every element of fx so sigma star must be in g t comma f if sigma 1 and sigma 2 belongs to k comma f then for all t belongs to capital t we have sigma 1 sigma 2 star t is equal to sigma 1 sigma 2 t which is equal to sigma 1 sigma 2 t which is equal to sigma 1 sigma 2 star t or sigma 1 star sigma 2 star t or it can be written as sigma 1 star sigma 2 star t uh, therefore sigma 1 sigma 2 star is equal to sigma 1 star and sigma 2 star from this we conclude that the mapping phi of g k comma f into g t comma f defined as phi sigma is equal to sigma star for all sigma belongs to g k comma f is a homomorphism of g k comma f into g t comma f the kernel of this homomorphism consists of all elements sigma in g k comma f such that sigma sorry phi sigma is equal to sigma star is the identity of group g t t comma f the identity of the group g t comma f is the identity map on t therefore the kernel of phi is the set of all sigma belongs to g k comma f such that t is equal to sigma star t is equal to sigma t for all t belongs to capital t but sigma t is equal to t for all t belongs to capital t if and only if sigma belongs to g k comma t therefore the kernel of phi is exactly g k comma t now by the fundamental theorem on homomorphism of group of the groups the image of g k comma f in g t comma f under the mapping phi is isomorphic to the quotient group g k comma f is a divisor of g k comma t now the order of group g k comma f is a divisor of g k comma t so order of g k comma f is a divisor of order of g k comma t the index of g k comma t in g k comma f which is equal to the degree of t over f by part one of this theorem which is equal to order of g t comma f
since t is normal over f thus the image of gk comma f in gt comma f is homo isomorphic to a group of order order of g t comma f since the image of g k comma f in g t comma f is a subgroup of g t comma f therefore it is all of g t comma f hence the quotient group g k comma f is a divisor of k g k comma t is isomorphic to g t comma f